Hey there everybody, this is Caitlin here and welcome to our latest feature match on the channel today. Today we have something a little bit different, I'm going to be playing in this one. I'm on the right hand side with Lunia, featuring my Kane Ping Patrol deck, which is black and red. In particular focusing on dealing damage and sniping things that are hurt. And Ben on the left hand side here is playing a Carrot deck, which is light and fire. And he's got some really neat tricks or whatever in his deck, which will probably cause a little burn on my side of the field. But here we are rolling to see who is going Going first. Ben obviously rolled the highest, so he is going to go first and I will get energized once we figure out which dice is representing his strength counters and which one is representing my energize. I hope you enjoy this video. It is one of those ones where we're only doing one match as opposed to like the best of three. It's just because of recording things and whatnot, it's been a little bit difficult to get full on full matches and you know, scaling it down because we did record some which were best of three, but because of how long it took, the videos are quite long. So I'm debating whether to split them up into two parts, whether to keep them as one part and make it just an extra long video. Let me know guys, whether you prefer to see matches split up and whatnot, or whether you would prefer to see all three rounds, if we manage to go to three rounds in one video and you wouldn't mind it being just a little bit longer. But here we are setting up for our turn to start off. I believe I put back one card and Ben puts back three to try and fix our hands and whatnot, ready to start the game. And I believe Ben is also going to be ready to start off once he has a look at his cards and thinks about his options and everything he can do in his first turn to see if it's viable. Ben is also proxying uh, his stones. If you see a light magic stone being called from his side of the field, it is actually a magic stone of heat ray uh, because he doesn't have access to the stones as, at the moment. But we don't mind really because obviously this is a casual setting. And he is tapping to call a stone. He's getting his own carrot stone, which gives him two strength counters and he's keeping it up as he passes the turn to me. And I draw a card and tap Lunia to get a stone and get Magic Stone of Scorch Bales that can produce darkness or fire. And with that stone here, I am going to tap and play Kane, the treacherous killer of the dogs. But in response, uh, not the dogs gods, in response, Ben is going to pay his one and two strength counters to play Hell Flame, which is going to deal 400 damage to Kane. And since Kane came in this turn, I can't tap him for his ability. So he has to go to the graveyard and I have to end my turn with Ben drawing a card here in response and he will recover everything. Goes to tap for a stone and he gets just a basic fire stone, nothing too out of the ordinary here, but he's going to pay the two and play Mad Boar, which since it's got swiftness, it will swing at me for 700 and deal 700 to me, which is very sore turn two, dealing 700 damage. Mad Boar is definitely a very, very good card and is a very dangerous card if you don't deal with it quickly enough. Obviously, I don't really have much response to it, so I have to take the 700, leaving me on 33 and he goes to end his turn. I recover everything and draw a card. Tapping Lunia, I get a fire magic stone. So not too well here on my uh, dual color stones here, but I'm thinking about it, contemplate what I can do. Obviously Mad Boar is a problem if I do not deal with it straight away. It will be a pain in my backside because obviously that thing swinging for 700 each turn is a bit of a pain. I'm going to pay two to play Huela Source to deal 300 damage to the Mad Boar and kill it which kind of like saves me a little bit there because obviously leaving Mad Boar on the field would be a vital uh, misstep on my part. So I'm going to end my turn and Ben's going to recover after drawing. Tapping for a stone, there he gets the Magic Stone of Heat Ray, which obviously is being represented by a light Magic Stone here. Just make it a little bit simpler and figuring out which stone it's meant to proxy for. He is then going to pay one light and one red for Crimson Ray, which allows him to deal 600 damage to my Huella Source and allows him to gain 600 life, which is a bit of a bummer. I don't really have much ways to counter spells that do damage like that, so he gains the life and my Huella Source has to die. He then goes to end his turn and I recover after drawing. Tapping for stone here, I get another basic fire magic stone. Think about it here, I have a couple of options in my hand here, as you can see off to the side, I've got Lightning Strike, I've got Heterocline Excalibur, a Haster, uh, I think I also have my own Mad Boar, just depends on what I want to go for here. I pay two, which is just the two red, to play Basset, kind of setting up for the Haster play next turn, so that Haster can be dealing it double damage whenever he does swing. And I will also pay the one and my Energize in order to play Mad Boar, I want to get my own Mad Boar out, so to speak here. I go to swing with it and it will deal the 700 to Ben here, putting him down to 39, so kind of like uh, nullifying his Crimson Ray. Um, but thankfully her effect doesn't trigger for Mad Boar because obviously Mad Boar is not a Cthulhu, so it doesn't matter there. Ben goes to draw, recovers Kirk and his other stones. I also have to point out that the ping from Mad Boar attacking is going to hit Bassett so that she just takes 100 damage because it's not an optionary thing. I have to hit a resonator with the ping. So that's why I was like kind of also pointing out to Bassett there uh, that she took 100 damage off of Mad Boar swinging from Lunia's effect. Now Ben is contemplating what he's going to do. He has his four stones. The other stone that he managed to get in there was another magic stone of Heat Ray, I believe. 
which is very nice for him. He has options, obviously. He pays two red for a mad boar himself, which is obviously really scary. And then he also pays another two red for Melgus, King of Conquest. He's going to initially think that he's going to swing in with Melgus, but because mad boar has bloodlust, it has to swing first. So he goes to swing with the boar. Boar into boar, as he likes to call it, since uh, bloodlust is a little stipulated that you need to remember if you are playing it. Killing my boar outright, I have no way to, to stop that at all. I'm out of mana and whatnot, or rather out of will. So my boar has to go to grave. And I believe he is not going to swing with Melgus. Going to end his turn and pass it over to me to draw a card. I recover everything and I get a stone, a basic fire magic stone. And now since he thankfully left my Basset alive, I can go for the Haster play. Which is obviously what I really want to do here because Basset will be doing double damage thanks to her buffing up Cthulhu's who um, deal any damage to resonators. I pay the three and play Haster. He enters with his limit counters, which is very, very nice. And since Hafter has swiftness, I can make sure that I can go off and get an attack this turn and hopefully kill either or, or mostly I want to kill the boar because the boar is the main problem. Melgus is also really annoying, but at the moment it is the boar that is the main problem. 700 attack each turn is very, very painful. And so I need to do something about that. And now I'm kind of contemplating here which way I want to play this about. So I declare to attack with Hafter. And I am using his ability, which is now doubled thanks to um, Bassett, to kill Melgus initially and deal uh, the 900 to Ben. The ping effect is going to hit the boar from Lunia's uh, effect to deal 100 to the boar. And I kept the Magic Stone of Scorch Bears up, mainly so I can have the option of either using the Lethal Arrow or the Lightning Strike. But thinking about it, I am thinking about probably going to be using the Lethal Arrow, the most viable option here. I tap the one and to lethal arrow the boar to kill it after it's been damaged. Sorry, at my stones here so they're not too messy and whatnot. I have no will left to play. I don't think it's a viable option to swing with Bassett because I'd rather keep the blocker up. She only swings for 300 anyway, so I go to end my turn and remove a limit counter from Haster. Obviously, when he loses all his limit counters, he will go back to my hand, thankfully. And I end my turn there. Ben goes to draw. Recovers his ruler and all his stones. And we'll see what stone he calls here. He gets another magic stone of heat ray. So he obviously didn't have enough uh, light stones to represent all of the magic stone of heat ray. So that is also a proxy. We did point out uh, beforehand um, when the game started uh, that anything that wasn't like a normal proxy, like uh, just a general card, whatever, would be proxying heat ray. So that's fine. Like I understand which card it is. He's got options here, obviously. He's got quite a little will up. And since he's playing kind of like a red rush kind of build, most of his things will be cheap or they will be, you know, kind of like justifiable in their cost. He also needs to figure out which way he wants to play this in case he wants to play any light cards. So he's going to pay two red and play another boar, which is a pain in my backside. And he is also going to use Dreams of Flight. He rolls and gets a four and gives the boar flying and plus four four, which is quite annoying there. It happens until end of turn, obviously. So this boar is going to swing for quite a hefty amount, which is scary. And he also pays two red to blood boil me to deal uh, 600 to me in particular. So he, d he definitely wants to get me down. And he's going to actually fly the boar into my haster to try and kill it, which is really interesting. He could have just swung over and hit me for face, which probably would have been a lot more viable in ending me quicker, but I can see why he wants to have the Haster dead, because obviously if I swung next turn in the, with the Haster, I could kill the boar. So he swings into the boar and decides to kill it. I don't want to block with Bassett really, but I decide to do that. I obviously can't block with Bassett because obviously she doesn't have flying. And he ends his turn there and passes to me so I can recover my cards. Tap a stone, uh, tap my ruler rather to get a stone, just a basic fire magic stone, which is a little bit of a shame. But now I'm going to pay one red to kill the boar, pay, dealing 500 to it because I want that boar out of my life. I don't like it at all. Now contemplating what I can do. Obviously Hasta was my best play there, but I've lost it. I pay one for Red Riding Hood, the Rainbow to the Heavens, which I quite like this card. It just, it doesn't, uh, it's kind of weird uh, which deck you want to play it in. Obviously it can work in a variety of decks. I like it in red just because it's a flyer. And then I'm going to pay two in order to play another Bassett, Goddess of Cats. Uh, which obviously will affect the uh, won't affect little red. It will affect my other Bassett. So I swing with both little red and Bassett to deal 600 damage in total. Not a lot in the grand scheme of things, but you know it is some damage at least. So he's down to 23 and I'm on 27. He draws a card, recovers all his stones and his ruler, 
And now we're kind of getting into the nitty gritty here. This is where things are probably going to take a turn, which will decide the end of the battle, no doubt. So he is going to pay three in order to Judgment Kerrick, which is a very, very scary. Obviously, when Kerrick flips, he does all the shenanigans with his counters or whatever, regaining the counters that he's already spent. He didn't get too much in ways of actual Kerrick stones, which is probably why he wanted to flip to try and get more of them there. He's also going to blood boil me, putting me down to 21, which isn't very nice at all, but you know, we need to make our do's. He's also thinking about what he wants to do here. He's got all these counters that he can spend and he's wondering which way he wants to distribute them. Obviously he can remove up to five to do 500 at a time. So what initially he seems to be contemplating whether he wants to target Little Red or one of the Bassets. Initially, he's paying 500 in order to deal the 500 damage, or rather, five counters deal 500 damage to Red, killing her, which is a bit of a shame because I only just played her last turn. And then he's going to spend 10 counters to deal 1000 to Bassett, the one that is still standing, in order to kill her, which is a bit of a shame because obviously I would have liked to have kept her up for the next turn and whatnot. But she dies. I have no way of stopping it. And he's going to be sitting there with Carrick there, ending his turn. I recover. Get all my stones up and get my ruler up. Now we need to see what we can do. I really don't have many options here. As you can see, I only have two cards in hand, which I have Heterocyte Excalibur, which can't target Carrick, and I also have Lethal Arrow, which again can't target Carrick, which is a bit of an issue, especially since I only have Bassett on the field. My best bet is that um, I can block with Bassett next turn which is going to be the only thing because obviously I have no way of drawing cards. I am also debating here, as you can see me looking at Lunia, whether or not I can flip her. But really, flipping her isn't doing me much justice because obviously her enter ability isn't going to target Kirk because it only deals it to Resonators and not to J slash Resonators, which is a little bit of a bummer, which is why I always preferred Sylvia over Lunia uh, because obviously Sylvia's one could target a J slash Resonator, but sadly Sylvia is no longer in the format, uh, ruler-wise anyway, she's a Resonator at the very least. But I'm going to call a stone and get a basic fire magic stone and I really have nothing else to do this turn given my horrible hand state here. I'm going to pass it over to Ben and let him draw a card. And he's going to recover all his cards here. As you can see here, I've not really got too much hope here unless I get some kind of amazing draw next turn. But even then, it might not be enough. He pays too light for Faria, the Paladin of the Dawn, who's a 600 light resonator. He's then going to play one Fire to high speed Faria, giving her a plus 2-2 two two and swiftness until end of turn which is a, a tad annoying at the very least. Obviously, if he decides to swing with Kirk, I will most likely block that first because I don't want to take too much damage. Fire being an 8-8 currently is not too much of a concern compared to Kirk's 1200, which is very, very scary. He's also in discussing how damage works out with um, Bassett. Considering that she is a Cthulhu, um, any damage she deals to a Resonator would be doubled. So he's just double checking that, but since it's just a resonator, I do believe it doesn't affect Kirk. So he's going to swing with Kirk, and I'm going to end up uh, blocking with Bassett to save myself. He is then also going to swing with Faria. I'm going to play Hit for Click Excalibur for one darkness. Because he used up all his light there, um, in playing Faria, he had no way to pay the two light to protect her, obviously. And I have to pay 500 life for that. Was it worth it? I'm not too sure, but I feel like it was the right play to get rid of the Faria at least. And he's going to end his turn there and I will recover. And at this point we will see whether or not it is indeed the plan, uh, or rather whether or not I can pull anything off this turn to try and save myself. As you can see in my hand there, I pulled a Haster, which may or may not be good, but at this point in the game I'm only on 1600, um, it might not be enough. As you can see there, I feel like I should have like flipped Lunia at that point, but as you can see, I tapped Lunia and already pulled the stone out, so there was no way I could take that back as much as I wanted to. I was like, I, I should have not rushed that, I should have thought about it a little bit more, but I'm going to pay the three and play the Haster regardless. He's going to gain his two limit counters, which is very nice. Not much to do here though, because literally I can't use Lethal Arrow uh, against Carrick, which is very, very annoying. But I will swing at Ben, dealing 900 to him, uh, who is now on 1400, and it will deal 400 damage to Carrick uh, with Haster's ability. And obviously, Lunia's pink ability deals 100 to Haster, because Haster can't, or rather, Lunia can't touch uh, Carrick with her pink ability. She can only hit. Uh, resonators and not J slash Resonators. So I'm out of options here. I have to end my turn with a limit counter from Haster. And basically, um, 
Kirk, or rather Ben, has the best option to be able to end me this turn. I am only on 1600, and while Kirk is on 1200, he can just, he's got a viable like amount of stones here. He can probably play something with swiftness and end me. And as he does so, he's going to pay four for um, Jeanne d'Arc, who I think is the, I think this is the one where it's like the per uh, Pursuant Flame or something. No, that's Persia. Or it's, one, it's the one from uh, Legacy Lost anyway. But he's going to Dreams of Flight Kirk, which is probably the best option here because obviously Kirk has a little bit more strength to him. And he knows I can't touch Kirk with most of my spells only targeting J slash Resonators. Or rather, um, Resonators. So we roll the dice, and we have a brief moment here where we debate whether, because it rolled in between the mat here, we are debating whether it rolled a 4 or a 2. But looking at the way that the dice fell here, and obviously the both of us leaning in to inspect it, I concur that it rolled on the 4. So we're going to be giving uh, Kirk the plus 4. Enough to definitely kill me, considering that he's flying and enough to end my life here as it were because i have no options i can't do anything lethal arrow isn't going to touch Kirk, and yeah he's just going to scoop well I, rather i'm going to scoop for game because i have no options i'm just gonna, like hey if you swing with that um uh janda arc or whatever i'm going to do this but obviously it, wasn't, it wouldn't have touched her but yeah it was a very very interesting match guys at first i thought maybe i could get a little bit of momentum going with my Bassets and with Haster, but obviously there were so many board plays, there were so many like damage plays. Um, obviously, I think uh, Ben's deck is also really, really good. The setup is nice, the inclusion of light is very nice for Carrick as well, and I really, really enjoyed playing against it. It's really, really interesting. Um, I hope you enjoyed this match, guys. It's a little bit shorter, a little bit longer than last time, though, but it's shorter than I would like. Hopefully next time I'll have a proper full-on three uh, matches or whatever, or rather the um, best out of three that I want to give to you guys to enjoy. But let me know down below in the comments, guys, what you thought of our plays or what you thought of our decks and whatnot. I might try and see if I can get some deck profiles from some of my friends to contribute to the channel so you can see a couple of ones different from the ones that I've built and whatnot. So until next time, guys, I will see you all later.